Hello and welcome back to Games Embassy with the Ambassadors of Gaming. I'm one of your army of hosts, Ambassador Chris. And I am Ambassador Michael. And we are the original hosts. We are doing a reunion show with just the two of us. Actually, there were supposed to be three, but we're going to play it off like there's supposed to be two. Mike, how are you today? We have news about I'm, stuff. I'm doing good. It's it's a, a pretty good Sunday so far. We've had some pretty good banter before the show, as we usually do. We have some interesting yeah, stuff to discuss. Stuff. He did. Uh, yeah, we originally planned to have a third host today, but as some of you may know, it is Eid. So I am uh, culturally deaf and scheduled Billy on this day. So he's celebrating the holiday and we let him off the hook. So it is just Chris and I, and we're going to do some uh, talk about some interesting stories. But first, um, I want to I want to go ahead and mention what we've been talking about all week in our community. Um, we're not going to be discussing the politics um, of guns and video games on the show today, but we do want to acknowledge those who were affected and killed in the recent shootings in Dayton and El Paso. Um, I know it's a big deal right now, but I just didn't think we could add anything substantive to that discourse, and it's not really what this show is about. So um, if you're interested in that, we'd be more than willing to do a group chat. I just think that it, it would devolve ultimately into... Uh, a gun debate and that's why we decided yeah, that, against that's it. not what's on our show but um like he said our thoughts gotta go out to the friends and family of all who affect all who were affected um mm -hmm. we will not be doing our plug today as we know as we do to show respect of course for that so from there why don't we go ahead and get into updates announcements and other miscellaneous news mike take it away of course so DuckTales Remastered is uh, being removed from digital storefronts. Capcom informed consumers via its site that the game will be removed from all digital fronts on August 9th. You can still download the game digitally and disc-based copies of the game will play as usual if you have already purchased the game. However, it's already past that date, so if you missed it, it's too late for you now. Yeah, kind of uh, slow reporting on our part. Right. I mean, it was time-based. They basically said it like two days before. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, it's going down and not going back up. Bye. Yeah. All right, Disney. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Modern Warfare might get a free-to-play Battle Royale. Just in case you forgot that those Me Too Battle Royale games that are trying to take some of Fortnite's uh, popularity, if you forgot mm -hmm. that they were here, they're still here. They're still kicking. Uh, the leak was started by Call of Duty YouTuber Long Sensation, which I really don't like that. Yeah. In their original tweet, they say that, quote, Battle Royale and Modern Warfare will be a free mode to release in early 2020. It will be downloadable as a separate game, but also will still be connected to the core game. So I assume that means your progress, you, you can, your progress will be uh, affected by the, uh, you know what I mean? Like you can, um, if say there's like a loot box, which I mean, sure. it's an Activision game. We so know there's, there's going to be loot boxes. Be box. yeah. You could get like a skin for the battle royale mode when you're playing modern warfare and then when you go and open modern warfare the skin will be there kind of kind of like that sort yeah of like that. i would assume that's probably the case it's smart if they do it free to play because blackout was huge last year it still is pretty huge um but not everybody played it because it was attached but to black ops 4 so blackout had a lot of uh blackout had a lot of drop off after they put the uh the loot crate guns the crates yeah Loot crate, no. Loot crate, loot crate's great. Um, the loot box guns in uh, there's like a special thing you can go to where you have access to some of your guns that you've gotten from loot boxes. So people were pretty uh, peeved that they added thought of it as a pay to win model. But this is, is more so a big deal of a competitor because it's free. You know, Apex yeah. Legends did the same thing, and while Apex is nowhere near the popularity of Fortnite, it still has a lot of users. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, dropped I'd off pretty I, hard, but yeah, it's still I'd pretty say popular. that it's probably the top competitor to Fortnite in the battle royale scene. It's probably yeah. Apex Legends, but uh, well, I'm I'm going on a tangent. Mike, go ahead and move us on to the next one. Uh, Death Stranding is mysteriously removed from the list of PlayStation Four exclusives. The game is no longer on the list of exclusive games on PlayStation site. A now deleted but archived FAQ on Medium details the relation relationship between Sony and Kojima. The FAQ specifically mentions that the game is console exclusive, however Sony did not specify for how long, if there indeed is a time limit. The game was always planned to be on PC, and there are no plans currently for Kojima to make any PlayStation exclusives or for them to work together on future games. 
Mm. So this is most likely just it's going to release on PC probably. I mean, and it makes sense. Yeah. It's a Kojima game. You know, people are going to people are going to want to play it just because it's just because it's a Kojima game. People are going to want to play right. it. So like so toss it to the PC wilds. Yeah, it's very uh, I don't know. The PlayStation community is really weird about exclusives. They get really butthurt about it when it's like, oh, this game is going to uh, whatever PC. Uh, so let me put it on here. Uh, Detroit's not on here, and that's a console exclusive. Um, I don't see Beyond or um, Heavy Rain on here on the same list. So any game that's basically a second party game uh, is not on this list if it's uh, some, not on the console. Uh, some PC gamers, though, would get, got butt hurt when certain games made it to console, like Diablo. That's true. Yeah, there's always somebody who gets mad about something. Yeah. So. So it's kind of funny. Sony gets mad that again that one of the PlayStation people, the Sony ponies. I yeah. say this knowing full well that I own both the consoles, so I'm both an X Bone and a Sony <laughs> pony. Or Fair Play enough. Stupid. I love Play Stupids. Play Stupid that, that, is funny. That's a funny one. Um, but well, it's what funny. are Switch get... fans called? Are they just uh, called annoying. I like Switch. I play my Switch. I play my. I play my Switch seriously daily. I I believe that. I've and also been playing it daily lately. There's so. a new platformer coming out, uh Exception coming out on Tuesday. It's like okay. it almost reminds it's like another Celeste kind of game. It's a platformer, but it has this really cool like almost like the Matrix like things are moving all around and the the oh, point I'll of look into that. It look, looks really cool and it's, it's coming out on Tuesday so I'm going to be doing that. Cool. So, uh cool. Cool, cool. <laughs> all right. Moving on to some positive news. Rockstar hires contractors to full-time employees. Kotaku reported that the company has converted contractors to full-time employees at Rockstar Lincoln, where most of the testing for their big titles, like the recent Red Dead Redemption 2, occurs. And when I say these contractors are specifically playtesters, this is great news, especially when we remember the horror stories that Kotaku's Jason Schreier reported on from Treyarch's Black Ops 4 playtesters and their absolutely awful quality of life, which mm-hmm. we reported on in a previous video. So, good on you, Rockstar. Good job. You treated people with basic human decency. Uh, Trying to get so- rid of the whole crunch so they're doing all their crunch stuff right. so that they're doing good PR. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's all, it's all good PR at this point. Yeah. So uh, the last little tidbit here in the updates is going to be a bundle of uh, game announcements and release dates. So uh, Triumph 4 is going to be launching on October 8th. One of my f- more favorite mascots, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, is being remastered on Switch and it has been fully funded on Kickstarter. Anthem launches its Cata- Cataclysm event. Uh, people are disappointed and nobody really cares. What a shock. Bungie has started the process of adding Cross Save to Destiny 2, officially launching on August 21st. I thought that one would in, would excite you. Uh, yeah, I, my body is ready. Um, but just a heads up, I'm pretty sure not all of them are available. I I don't I know that uh I don't think Steam is there yet because the Battle.net transfer hasn't occurred yet. They're right. still using their own private online thing for the game. Right. So right now I th- think it'll work for all the consoles and maybe Battle.net, mm-hmm. and then later it'll work for steam and then of course when stadia comes out i'm sure it'll be ready upon uh i'm sure it'll be ready when stadia comes out and releases their shadow keep collection gotcha i saw it on the official site and on the official site we we actually have it linked um in the sources in the description but uh so there's more information if you want to find it you know directly from the horse's mouth you're gonna you're gonna play some Destiny with me. You said you wanted to get back into it just to see what's I up. I do, I do. Actually, there's so much. You're gonna look at the director and go like, "There's so much stuff." Like, holy, I'm crap. going to be overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but moving on to news, here are the big stories that Mike and I tend to have at least a small discussion on, uh, while we correct uh, indulge. Plants vs. Zombies: Garden Warfare Three. Leaks. After multiple mentions of an alpha test for the game, EA itself mentioned a new game in the series in its earnings call earlier this year. Screenshots of the game have leaked online showcasing the character select screen for both teams and the map. Gamescom is coming up, and with the announcement of the new Need for Speed, it's likely we will see the game be officially announced there as well. 
I just thought this one was. I put it specifically in the news because I thought it was funny because like we see alpha alpha testing is very common, especially with multiplayer games, and it like it, even before Modern Warfare got released, there was kind of some leak ish information from Call of Duty YouTubers or people who had like been invited to play the game beforehand, and this one is just it, it speaks I think on EA's relationship with their consumers. There was like there wasn't leaked gameplay footage, right? Of um, Modern Warfare, like nobody took photos or screenshots or whatever, but there's just like this total disregard for EA that people apparently have because they're just like, well, I don't care about your NDA, upload, you know, because like yeah, it sucks. Yeah, they do. I actually, ironically, I work near their Orlando office now. I literally work like two seconds away from it. It's really weird, but they um yeah they just don't have a great relationship with us anymore. So like, the fact that people are leaking their stuff isn't really a surprise. And I don't you really take feel a poop bad. on their front door. But it, it's not like if I do that, Andrew Wilson's gonna have to come clean it up. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> some <laughs> poor funny ass thought. I've had a funny ass thought of Andrew Wilson just kicking down the door and chasing you down the street like for some reason he's in the orlando office he if just kicks down the door see here's the thing chasing. andrew wilson does indeed look be like, like dude he are you probably beat uh, me up be like dude are you andrew wilson <laughs> make sure you're calling the police andrew wilson I, is chasing me i indeed am the uh andrew wilson 3000 i will now uh assault you and take your money through vicarious surprise purposes. mechanics yes i will surprise <laughs> uh, it will be a surprise mechanic when i beat you up and take your wallet so yeah. not that he needs it. he's doing just yeah. fine anyways i Too i bad. guess i should a, a little bit apologize to andrew wilson for besmirching his name but yeah. regardless I, I just didn't know how you felt about it. neither of us played garden warfare i like the original plants vs zombies but now it's just a crappy phone game so uh it was a game that I heard good things about on the Wii U, believe it or not. There weren't yeah. many good things that you hear about games on the Wii U, except for, of course, the first party titles. Right. You know, of course, the Mario Kart's good. Of course, a Zelda's good or something. And a lot of those games came to the Switch later because they didn't really get a fair time to shine on right. that platform. So they're like, we'll move them over to the Switch. And, and that, that was a good idea. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Just add a few things. That's what they did for Mario Kart. Right. So... The fact that I heard positivity about a Wii U game that wasn't first party uh, definitely makes me happy. I, I right. don't play Plants vs. Zombies, like you said. Yeah, but I don't either. It was really well received, the, the first the first two, actually, um, until they decided to throw card packs in that one. Then the it's second EA. one. It's EA. Of course. What so, do you expect? Um, I expect that because they make so much money from their sports licenses, they could afford to not do that in every game but they want to make all the money so whatever i saw a statistic something about like 60 or something percent of that i don't remember these but a huge percentage of their revenue is microtransaction oh yeah that's basically nice. true for every company at this point all the major publishers like even ubisoft and ubisoft's one of the like ones that isn't even as egregious with their microtransactions they're still pretty bad i wonder how they ever lived without them um apparently they didn't Apparently, it was just always terrible, and their their revenue wasn't great, you know. So, I don't know. All right. Sounds well, like BS to me, but whatever. Moving yeah. on. Take us on to our next news. So, Microsoft has filed some patents for a mobile controller. Patents found to have been filed on July 9th have shown that Microsoft has an interest in creating a mobile-friendly controller. While some have reported it as a handheld console, the device is more like the standard controller attachments you see for mobile phones. According to the patent, the controller is attached to a phone case on the device. I have this a is the clickbait that's one. been going around. Yes, please. Yeah. I'm just going to start off by just saying it's clickbait. That's all it is. Yeah, it really is just clickbait. The second thing is we are... This this can work for some phones, but it won't work for others. Um, a huge section of the Android ecosystem is dominated by Samsung. And it's going to be very difficult for you to, like, you can make a controller attachment designed for that phone in particular, but the display is curved, which means if you were to slide on controllers, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you've seen the new Samsungs, but basically the screen goes all the way to the front edge of the phone. So, like, there's nowhere to slide anything onto it. You know, like, if you put a case on it, it's going to cover part of the screen. 
And then if you slide the controllers onto it, it's going to cover part of the screen. And so it's one of those things where it's like, I'm sure they, they'll manage. But even with the iPhone, the iPhone's front screen is basically completely taken up now, right? By the screen. Except yep, for the it, just has a, it just has a little top notch, you know, that everyone right. got up in arms about when it released. Yep. And and you can't, like, block that off because it's a camera. So you can't, you know yep. what I mean? So, I don't know. But, yeah, the, the, the problem, main problem we had is that it was, this was going around like, oh, it's Microsoft's handheld. And it's like, it's not, it's not a it's handheld. It's not a handheld. It's just an attachment for your phone. We've been, I, I don't like the conflation of those two things. We were discussing it before the show, but basically, like, my issue is that the phone's primary function is not to play games. That's why it's not a console. That's why it's a mobile device. That's why it's different than the Switch, even though the Switch is something I take on the go with me. It is a mobile device, so but I it is a handheld console because its primary function is to play video games. So, I don't. I, I, the main issue is just like the reporting in this is really wonky. So, so b- before we move on, just the something I want to say, just out of totally out of left field, has nothing to do with this. Sure, there are there's something that would make me so happy. I know it'll probably never happen. For one, it would first it have to mean that Stadia is good. Which okay. I'm, I'm uh, after what I've been reading, I'm leaning toward the fact that it's probably not going to be good. And two, if it ever came to Switch, if you were able to straight up just log into Stadia on your Switch, oh. yeah, that would be pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> that'd Stadia, be so good. Switch has the capability to stream games as we've seen in Japan. Like you can play as I think it's Odyssey. You can play on Switch if you stream it, and. There was oh Resident Evil Seven. You can stream Resident Evil Seven to your Switch in Japan. It's like this really cool feature that they have in Japan that they just don't offer here for some reason. Um, maybe it's because you it, it, Wi-Fi networks are more available, or maybe it's just it, it's just easier. I don't know. It's probably because more, Switch dominates better in Japan than it does here. So most people that own a Switch own a console. Maybe that's why they're not bringing it that feature over. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like. You already have the capability. Why not just do it? Oh, I'd love it. Yeah. I think it's much more likely you'd see xCloud on Switch than you would Stadia, personally. But I yeah. barely trust that Stadia is going to get streaming right, and that's just because it's Google. There's no way I trust that Microsoft's going to get it right. Yeah, that's fair. Because I don't trust okay. Microsoft to get most things right, <laughs> if I'm to be uh, honest. Uh, like the launch of the Xbox One. All right. Uh, moving on. DayZ is on its way out in Australia. Mm-hmm. The game was originally blocked uh, from having physical sales, even though the game was rated MA15 plus by the Australian Classification Board. The Classification Board is looking to now ban the game entirely, digitally and physically. The game was originally classified as RC, which is something saved for uh, things akin to drug and uh, drugs and violence. <laughs> the classification board wrote in its report the game was banned due to quote illicit or prescribed drug use related to incentives or rewards end quote the incentives and rewards is the player can smoke a joint labeled cannabis and indicated by a cannabis bud in the inventory the game will be removed from sale on steam playstation and xbox's digital stores lastly it seems that the cannabis item has not been implemented in the game yet and it's unknown what it will do according to their Wikipedia page. I think we removed it in there, but the original reason they said it is because at the time that they were doing this classification, the original intent was that the joint would basically refill your health bar. And so that was the incentive. I I guess I missed that in there. Maybe we removed it because of the later implication, but they they are like, oh, we're going to put this in the game, but we don't really know why we're going to put it in the game. I guess. And no, that's uh, smart. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like one of those things where it was like, I don't know if they were just trying to be like edgy or something. Unnecessarily. Edgy yeah, I don't like I don't really know what the thought process behind that was because at least if it was like I don't know. Daisy's what? Yeah. Uh, it's it's the it's kinda like um the Xbox game. What's the Xbox game about surviving zombies? You know what I'm talking about. If you play Xbox. Um, so surviving zombies there's left for dead there's... no it's the horde one it's like you have a you have a, a like a settlement basically and like i don't i don't know metal gear survive 
No, it's not that one. It's an Xbox exclusive. State of Decay. That's what it's called. State, State of, Decay. of Decay. Sorry, yeah, just like flashback. Um, so it's it's kind of like that where it's more survival based, I think. Uh, but it's very. I don't know. I don't know why you would do this. It just seems kind of silly. Um, I mean, it's not gonna matter for PC players. They're just gonna download it from another storefront. And if you really care that much, you could download it from other storefronts on your Xbox and your PlayStation by just having a different account from a different country. So, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the region locking stuff isn't that sophisticated. You could totally get around that. Yeah, it's not really a thing this generation. Like, I have a Japanese PlayStation account on the off chance. I want to buy some Japanese game that never comes to America. Hasn't happened yet in three years I've had the account, but, you know, it's there. I think I got it because it was like they were giving some game away for free that I wanted that I didn't want to have to pay for. I think that's how I ended up, you know, justifying it. But anyway, that's smart. You got any thoughts on that? No, I'm just thinking how much of a smart guy you are. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so let's move on then to uh, Nintendo and the most requested thing we've been asking for. Uh, Nintendo mentions that it is aware of the demand for backwards compatibility. During a and a with stockholders, Nintendo president, Shantaro Furukawa mentioned that the company is very aware that people want to play their older titles. Furukawa specifically mentioned that they would not or could not provide any new information about how the company may bring older titles to the Switch. Apparently, Nintendo would like to, quote, deliver them in some form, end quote, while separately mentioning that Switch Online does allow access to some older titles through whatever the NES thing is called. Yeah. Um, I don't think those are the games people are talking about. People are yeah. talking about, uh, for one, let's remember the Wii U did not sell well. No. Uh, it was pretty bad. And the Wii Virtual Console, I think, was very limited. Yeah. The, the Virtual the issue, Console that they had for the Wii. The issue people apparently have is that the, the Virtual Console was like, a, it was decent enough, but they didn't update it frequently enough, and none of your stuff carried over. You had to keep buying stuff on each new system. So. Yeah. So, and there was the virtual console on the 3DS, which had some games, but not the games that you would, uh, yeah. not the games that you'd really want. Right. And then they remastered some of the biggest games that people wanted on um, Wii U, but then now they need to be ported to Switch. So, yeah. So, the Switch, this is, this is the time to do it, for one. The Switch is, is awesome. People love right. the Switch. It's hot. It's hot. Uh, even though they're worried about waning sales in the next year. I don't know. It'll be but, fine. They got the Switch um, Lite coming out. It'll be fine. That thing's going to sell. I like think crazy. that this, and you might agree with me on this, you might not. We already discussed in a previous video that a lot of the first, the big first party titles for Nintendo have been released. For That's true. Some, some of the game, they sometimes they only release a one game of its kind per the generation, like Mario right. Party or Mario Party. We got a Zelda game. It's probably going to be a while until the next Zelda game comes out, even though we, because all we saw was a teaser. We got a mm-hmm. Mario game. It's probably going to be a long while till we get another Mario game. Animal Crossing is coming. Uh, Poke the Pokemon game is going to come out. We're going to get a lull of first party titles. Of of I think of good of really anticipated first party titles. Right. Um, sorry, give me one second here. I'm taking a look at the the Switch list of exclusives because I think we're at that point now where like they really will have knocked out every major one that like the mainstream audience would be looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're yeah. just waiting on Animal Crossing. Um, Metroid. Well, I didn't even argue that ha- Animal Crossing is a little more niche than like Mario or Zelda. Uh, Metroid is had to be is being remade from the yeah. ground up because so they didn't like how out. it turned out. We haven't seen anything about Bayonetta. We haven't heard yeah. anything about it. So I think that this is this is such a good idea. This is a way it to really bring is. so much more back to the back to the the Switch or right. back to Nintendo. I guess I should say like. For example, the HD remakes of Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. You know, they came to right. the Wii U, but not a lot of people owned a Wii U. Bring that to the Switch. They really I would love to play Switch. that. You already did the hard work of remastering it and like doing the textures and 
formatting it back to you yes. Know, what does it res up to? 1080. 1080. Okay. So like they did all the hard work of that. All they have to do is make sure that it runs on Switch. Plus, uh, uh, Wind Waker HD has this really beautiful cell shaded graphics. Right. They brought those over the the cell shaded graphics to Breath of the Wild, and it shows. It's very, right. Very it pretty. looks very very good. Uh, so I'm looking through the list, and you may get another Splatoon, but I don't see any reason for that, honestly. Um, yeah, well, that's why I said sometimes you get, there are some games that will, use, that's, that will come out one per generation. I know Splatoon is a relatively new IP for Nintendo. Yeah. Because they've only it released on the Wii U. Right. And they released it pretty soon in the life cycle. That was within the first year, right? It came out in like the fall. That was like their big fall game that year. Oh, I can't that. even remember when it came out. Oh, yeah. It was Zelda came out at launch. Splatoon, I think, came out in the summer. And then Mario came out in the fall the same year, right? Or am I wrong about that? I can't. Mike, I just said I can't That's remember. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> so anyways, like the big ones that we like Pokemon is the next big thing. But the only other thing they have in the pipeline that's like that big, maybe Metroid. And we have no release that, date on that. Yeah, we have no release so. date. Uh, we've just gotten a teaser for Bayonetta, and that's it. And we haven't heard anything. Yeah, this, we haven't seen anything. There is a fleet. There is an army of games that are waiting right. to be on the Switch. That people would pay want good money them. for. And, like, I know this is going to be one of those things, but it was one of the things that, like, irks me the most is Nintendo's, like, Nintendo's very good with their IP in terms of managing it. But they're really bad at just listening to people. This is like my new battle cry, honestly, is why does everybody got to make it so hard for me to give you money? I just want to give you money to buy your shit. And you just have to make it difficult. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I will buy Wind Waker. I will buy... It, like, Pokemon Snap should be on the Switch. I don't see any reason why Pokemon Snap Mike, on what Switch. game do you want most on the Switch? Tell me right now. Out of the older titles? Out of any, out of anything that you think is possible to be brought to the Switch, I want Wind Waker the most. That's you want Wind Waker. Yeah, that's the one I want. Because I own that for the Wii U. I have the HD remaster. Um, one game that I would love is Link Between Worlds. It was a 3DS title. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have that much emphasis on the touchscreen, and they did it for a reason. The 3DS is pretty big, right? So. It's not exactly comfortable. It's not like you could... I tried to play Phantom Hourglass on my 3DS XL, and it was actually it hurt my left hand because it, the console is so heavy to be holding with one hand and right. to frequently play the game with the stylus. You would just use it to rearrange items, and there was a quick equip option where you didn't even have to use the touchscreen. That so was good. bring that to the Switch, and I will be a happy camper. Right. What was That's the thing they emulated? They made an emulator on Switch. Was it the N64 that they emulated? That they were working what? on. There's like an emulator that they've been working on for Switch. That's like Who, it's it's they? like a ROM. It's like a hack ROM thing. It's like a homebrew thing. Uh, I, can't I think they were they made a Wii and someone made a Wii and GameCube emulator that the Switch okay. is capable of running through homebrew. Okay, that's what I thought. I knew there was some emulator, but I couldn't remember which it was. And then they recently just got Android to run on it. So like, it's definitely possible. It's just a matter of whether or not Nintendo wants to put the resources in to get it done. So, uh, give me those games. I let me give you games. money. Just give let me give you money. Give me those <laughs> games. So there's some games like with motion controls, like even Skyward Sword. I know people didn't like how it wasn't all open world; it was very linear. Right. But you could, but with the motion controls, you can make that work with the Joy-Con. Right. You got the Joy-Con. Make it happen. You already have the the infrastructure there with the nunchuck and the Wii. Mode yeah. And the the Joy-Con's basically the same concept, so... Yeah, with, with some drift added in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bad pun. Joy-Con drift. Uh, joy <laughs> drift into... Uh, don't... Uh, oh, I was trying to come up with a pun like drift into Skyward Sword. That's the only That's the only drift in my Joy-Con that I want. Yeah, pretty much. Something like that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and move us on to of our course. next news piece. And this one's a big one. This oh one's boy. a big one. Loot boxes make headlines again. Yay. Starting out with, with <laughs> starting out with Rocket League. Rocket League is going to be removing all paid randomized crates, which is awesome. Developer Psionics, now owned by Epic Games, 
announced they would be removing randomized crates later this year and replacing them with, quote, a system that shows the exact items you're buying in advance, end quote. That's good. They're pretty on, we discussed this before the show, but they're pretty on the pulse of like what people like, and they're very in tune with their audience. And it's one of the rare, they're one of the rare developers who's like, all right, we hear you, we'll make the change. Now granted, they've been collecting money for a couple of years, but at, at least they're, at, somebody at Epic or Psionics is smart enough to be like, times are changing. They're like the Keanu Reeves of the game industry. Yeah, you said that, and I feel like it's fairly accurate. I feel like yeah. that's a pretty good, pretty good. Comparison. They're awesome. They're so nice. They care so much about their fan base. They update their game is what three years old now, and it's yeah, still yeah, probably, it, it, yeah. it, it's not it's not Overwatch or Rainbow Six. Like it doesn't mm-hmm. have as it's it's not the same kind of games as those where the action like brings them back. But it's it's a soccer game with cars, but it's so fun. And they're like, we're going to keep updating this game. We reported on a story not too long ago where mm-hmm. they said, uh, where they said, we have no, we're not right now. And we don't have an interest in making a Rocket League 2 because there's nothing wrong yeah. with Rocket League 1. They've mentioned that pretty frequently. And we, we've even said before, Rocket League is one of the first games this generation that's like a service. And it actually functions how most people want the game to. But that's because they were like, there's no reason for us to release a new updated version of this. We have people here. We have dedicated fans. We're making money. And by the way, the game's f- over four years old now. It was released in 2015. Yeah. So Some people, I, I feel like you think of games like Call of Duty and they're like, okay, like we need a new one every single year. Just right. slap a new number on it, give it a new thing. We need something new, something fresh. And well, and I get that because some games do get stale, obviously. Especially Call of Duty, right. because we've been playing them for, I don't know, I don't even know how old Call of Duty is. I don't know, it's pretty old at this point. They're probably slightly younger than us, if I had to take a guess. Yeah, um, it started on the PS2, I thought, so. Okay, so maybe like half our age or something, I don't know. Yeah. But, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next part of it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, N- Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony announced plans to disclose loot box odds. The ESA has stated that the companies will be implementing new policies that will require developers and publishers to disclose loot box rates, similar to how the App Store, Google Play, and how in other countries they require the rewards and percentages to be clearly outlined. The policy, according to the ESA, will include new games and games updated after the policy that include loot boxes or loot box-like randomized digital containers. Publishers have reached out to the ESA to say they are going to implement similar approaches to their games. The list provided by the ESA states that the following companies plan to have this disclosure by the end of 2020, and the platform holders are looking to implement the policy also by 2020. Those companies are Activision Blizzard, Bandai Namco, Bethesda, Bungie, Electronic Arts, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Take-Two Interactive, Careful, they might sue you. Ubisoft, Warner Bros., Wizards of the Coast. THQ Nordic, the ambitious devourer of IP, have mentioned on Twitter that they were not asked for a statement, but they have no games using loot boxes and no plans to introduce any. Bless your heart. Epic specifically... Good guy, THQ. Epic specifically mentioned to gamesindustry.biz that they made changes in Fortnite and plan to make changes, as mentioned above, to Rocket League to show players all the items they will receive before opening crates and any other llamas or quadrupeds. Any digital container, because if apparently if you're not specific, they'll be like, it's not a loot box. It's not a card pack. It's, it's a surprise okay. mechanic. Okay. It's the same basic concept. If I say, get me a Ziploc or get me a Tupperware container, and you're like, oh, Hand me the storage unit. They are one and the same. It, like, they annoy me with that. But you anyways, know what else is a surprise mechanic? Russian roulette. Oh yeah, actually, but that's much more dangerous. But the odd, the odds are much better on Russian roulette. <laughs> that's true. The odds of you winning Russian roulette are are much higher than getting something good out of. Well, box. wait, is is winning getting the one bullet or getting the five? Uh, I would consider the last person alive to be the winners, yes. Okay. 
<laughs> so your odds are much better. You both the odds of winning and losing are better than getting a loot box. <laughs> That's better true. Than getting what you want. In a have loot you box. have you seen the loot box odds for FIFA when they put those out? Yeah, yeah. It oh was my like god, point, they're abysmal. I would like, to, I would like to to point this out mathematically for those of you that don't know math. Okay, the odds of getting I think a gold character are zero point zero 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 seven percent. That's Holy four shit. zeros. That is that number is seven ten thousandths, which means that if you were to open a loot box ten thousand times, seven of them would be gold. That's insane. That's the statistic. Yeah. That is exactly what that number means. Right. So when they say around one percent, no, not even close. Yeah, my butt. That, that is, is ridiculous. I just wanted to point out what seven ten thousandths is, so that yeah. people really understood what that number means. Yeah. Seven out of your ten thousand loot boxes will be gold. That's okay. insane. Great. Moving on. Activision heralds its earnings, uh, helped in part by microtransactions and loot boxes. No shit. In a recent financial call, Activision chief Cody Johnson spoke about the company's earnings. Activision made one hundred million from in-game spending. 800 800 million what did i say 100 oh i'm sorry i thought i said 800 yeah they made 800 million yeah from insane in-game spending. amount of money king the mobile developer for candy crush that activision bought out years ago made the company the most money while johnson mentions that they believe the reason why black ops 4 monthly users grew more than world war ii's is due to increased engagement and updates to the game Black Ops 4 had a few instances of microtransactions being added in with updates, and the community continuously rails them against it. Uh, Those are loot boxes being added in the first place, selling tiers to the Battle Pass system, locking new weapons in loot boxes, and selling a smiley face reticle, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal until you realize it was something that used to be able to just be unlocked easily in multiplayer for free. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, that's why are they selling that? They used to just, that just used to be a reticle you unlocked. Like that was the first yeah. time where I was like, I remember when you can get this for free. Like I know it's yeah. like a tired line, but you know. So I don't know. None of this is really surprising to me. What I thought was most interesting is that they try to make a comparison between Black Ops Four and World War Two and like why it did so much better. It. There, I think that that's not the only reason. Obviously, his job to investors is to break down extremely complicated uh, ideas to basic concepts. But Black Ops has a name behind it, and it had a battle royale behind it. And really, the only updates that came to World War II were when they added DLC. Like those are the only times they really added updates, and then they like added new weapons to the loot boxes, like new whatever it was seasons or sets or whatever it was to the loot boxes. Other than that, there wasn't any updates for World War Two, like there just really weren't. So, um, I don't know. Black Ops Four was a huge success for them, obviously. Modern Warfare is going to be a huge success for them, obviously, and they're going to keep making an insane amount of money. Uh, I don't know if we discussed this, but one of the big things that people have a problem with with Activision lately is they like to do this thing where they add in the microtransactions like months after you buy the game. Like we, you and I specifically called this out in Black Ops Three, and it was the reason why we stopped playing it. Yeah, they're poopy. Yeah, they, they do that's that. what they do. They're so smart by going with all people. What what happens is people, and what bugs me the most is that some of these reviewers, like they make it sound like this game is so great, and there's no microtransactions. Like the, right. the when people review it, and it's like it's dishonest. A it's, little bit. It's like it's like give it time, man. They go through the same process. It happened with Black Ops 3 and it happened with Black Ops 4. They go through reviews of people talking like, yeah, you know, the game's not bad. It's okay. Whatever score they give it. But they hype up the fact and the loot mechanics are mm-hmm. really great. There's no stupid pay to win. There's none of this. It's really great. And then a few months down the line, they release an update video saying I with something titled, I was wrong about Black Ops 3. Or, I was wrong about Black Ops 4. And they're like, oh, these loot boxes are awful. Right. Happen, it'll, it'll happen with Modern Warfare. It'll probably yeah, it happen with whatever Call of time. Duty game comes next. Black Ops 5. Yeah. I'm oh, pretty... yeah, Black Ops 5. They're yeah. the ones, yeah. Yeah, because apparently Ravensoft completely screwed the pooch with Sledgehammer on the next one. So, I, f- I wonder if Activision is super strict where they're like, okay, well, we don't have the extra year to make a game. And I'm picturing Activision going, I don't care. 
<laughs> okay, well, guess what? Now all four of you are working on a game together. Yeah, I guess yeah, like it's it's gonna it's gonna be ready by this time. Uh, we normally have an extra year. I don't care what you normally have. I don't care if you poop into a game case and sell it. I just need something to sell. Yeah. So, so I don't pooping know. into a game case. That is that's it, a, EA did that. I think. Yeah, and EA they, does yeah. that pretty frequently. They quite literally yeah. just shit games out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's been an interesting week. The big thing with this Activision stuff is it circumvents <laughs> there's DSA. A, there's a there's a t- <laughs> huh. <laughs> this is gonna be so mean. There, there's a term for when you poop out a horrible game. It's called bio wearing. Wow, that's pretty hard, <laughs> but also true. Their last two games suck. Man, you're getting. <laughs> You're, just, you're pulling a real Bioware over there. I'm so That's sorry. the Bioware magic. I'm, the I'm Bioware t- yes! magic is how shitty it yes! is. Yes! It's magical. That's the Bioware magic. I don't mean oh, rail on so the jobs. Bad. We, we yeah. talked about how it was the management's issue, but still, yeah. it's funny. Yeah, this is not a, This this is not toward them. Oh, no. And we also read it never the horror. Is. We, t- we talked about the Kotaku horror story of yeah. the, the Bioware developers. Oh, we're not talking about the devs that worked really hard to try and make it happen. Their leadership was just poopy. Right. The To get back to the, the, the microtransaction thing a little bit, though, is that the big issue with the ESA stuff is, is that... Um, it, and I'm getting some points here because I did see something earlier uh, in the week uh, about it, but it was something we kind of discussed the week before about when, when they added in the, the Crash Team Racing stuff, is that this circumvents the ESA completely. Like, when you go to buy Crash Team Racing, it does not say there's microtransactions on the box. Because they printed the box months before they patched that in. They can get away with that. They don't have to do a reprint of the box. I mean, they probably have to reprint the box, but it's the same game. So if you go buy a used copy of the game and you buy a new copy of the game, one may say microtransactions and the other may not. But you, you, we, we discuss it all the time. The majority of sales come within the first month. So, like, most of the people that bought the game have a box that isn't accurate. And it's not, you can't sue because it's not a government agency. You know what I mean? Like, the ESA is not a government agency. So, like, realistically, they could just not put a rating on there at all. And, like, there's nothing you could really do about it. But it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, cool. Like, I don't know if you've ever looked outside of FIFA. Like, I looked at one a long time ago. I don't know why. Just for the sake of conversation, I looked at it. It was like all the percentages for stuff like in a mobile app is like asininely low, even lower than like the seven, ten thousand that we were talking about earlier. It's like even lower than that in for most good rewards in most mobile games. Um, so I'm interested to see if that really matters. But it's one of those things where it's like you're not going to it's not like you're going to get a pamphlet inside of your game. You know what I mean? It's going to be like, oh, go to our website or, oh, go to the store. You know what I mean? And we've discussed it before, but there's plenty of people who buy games that just don't play them like as well online. And like. It it makes a difference in certain things, because like with Crash Team Racing, you can't buy rewards if you're not online. Like you can't buy the extra characters or like with the in-game currency. And so but if you do decide to. Now it's going to be even harder because there's microtransactions and it's grindy. So it's one of those things where it's like, I have a problem with the box. Like, you really need to, like, put that out there when you boot a game up. Like, it should be in, like, your loading screen. of Or, like, the startup thing of, like, this game has microtransactions. Or at least, like, something in the corner. Like, you know how there's credits in sometimes, like, at the start menu or whatever? Or, like, yeah. the, the license agreement? They'll probably end up throwing it in the license agreement. That would be my assumption because nobody reads them. Yeah. It, that would what be my was assumption. That game, what was that game we were reading about? I can't remember what it was, but their matchmaking was uh their matchmaking strategy was really awful. They would try and match make you with people who had DLC weapons. Like oh, that was Activision. Better. That was Activision. It was idea. A, okay. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Yeah, it was so like a patent get, they applied for. So that you would get killed and then go like, oh, well, they have this. I need to go get this. Yeah, that was something they, they have a patent for. It's basically like a software engineering uh, thing where it like kind of tries to psychologically manipulate you into getting DLC stuff by pitting you against people. And then when you buy it, you face people who have stuff that isn't as good as you. So they feel that. And also you feel superior. But then after a while, they put you back with people who have stuff that is better than you. And it's like this very like 
horrible cycle. Malicious cycle. Yeah, it's yeah. awful. And I'm like, why Can't would I ever want to buy your games. game? They're just they if just, that's what you want to do. Yeah, screw that. Call of Duty sucks. Well, not Call yeah. of Duty sucks. Activision sucks. Here's the thing. I think this year I might actually get it just for the sake of playing it for a few weeks with you, and and maybe some what other people. What makes you think I'm gonna get it? I'm saying oh, wait, I'm gonna I'll get own it. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get it, and maybe we'll play it for a couple of weeks. And I totally expect them to botch the hell out of it, but I figure it might be fun to play for a little bit. And I'm interested in the story mode, so I'll see how it goes. But I haven't bought them any from anything in a while. I think what is the last Activision game I bought? I don't. I can't even recall, honestly. <laughs> So, I don't know. We'll we'll just have to see what what they get up to, and uh, we'll see kind of how this plays out. But it's this seems very preventative to the what is probably going to be legislation regarding loot boxes and stuff like that. So, but uh, anyway, I that's think it. that's it for us. Uh, try and check us out at least once a week. That's how often we try and do this. You might like what you find. I am Ambassador Chris, and I am Ambassador Michael. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye, friends. We're gone. Uh, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony announced plans to disclose loot box odds. The ESA has stated that the companies will be implementing new policies that will require developers and publishers to disclose loot box rates, similar to how the App Store, Google Play, and other countries... App Store, Google Play, and other countries... App Store and Google Play aren't countries. Oh, yeah, that's on me, I guess. My bad. Is this in other countries? Yeah, yeah, maybe you should put it. And how in other countries? Oh. Damn. Yeah. That's kind of uh, that wording on that's a little tricky. All right, I'm gonna restart. That's fine. Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony announced plans to disclose loot boxes. To damn it, I'm gonna restart again. <laughs> <laughs> you you really need to make a blooper reel for some of this shit. I I do. It's I pull it out and I put it at the end of the Patreon episodes usually. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. All right.